Then the wolf shall be a guest of the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the young lion shall browse together with a little child to guide them. The cow and the bear shall be neighbors, together their young shall rest. The lion shall eat hay like the ox. The baby shall play by the cobra's den, and the child lay his hand on the adder's lair. There shall be no harm or ruin on all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be filled with knowledge of the Lord as water covers the sea. On that day all shall be glorious. The reality is life is not like painted in that prophecy of Isaiah. There's violence, there's assault, there are murders. We read of them in the papers and watch it on TV. We mourn for the good old days when we never locked our doors, we left our keys in the ignitions. Those were the days of paradise. Those were the days of the Garden of Eden. Those were the days of the beginning of creation. And now God gives us a new gift because of our new violence and assault. He's given us a new gift as we read in St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. He describes the story. This is the story of the new creation. This is the gift that is given to us by God. And we say, come Holy Spirit and fill the hearts of your faithful and recreate in us the spirit of divine life. What was this gift given to us? Jesus Christ, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he made himself nothing, taking on the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being formed in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to death on the cross. And therefore God has exalted him highly and bestowed on him a name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And now I'd like to paint the second picture for you. Accompany me to the Mount of the Beatitudes. There Jesus is teaching the crowds. They have been hanging on to every word that he, what he has been saying the whole day long. They are hungry. And so Jesus takes the bread. He takes what they have and he takes them, he blesses them, and he gives them back. He says to them, my Father in heaven has created the animals, the birds, and the fish for you. And now the same God is going to give you generously food that you can be nourished on. But Jesus asked them to look beyond the bread that they are going to eat. He, Jesus would tell them, God fed your ancestors in the desert. And for 40 long years, the crowds are delirious. They want to make Jesus king. And he tells them, look beyond the bread you eat. And Jesus slips through the crowd. Because they were there because Jesus gave them something to eat. But he had something even more special to give them. This was the bread of life. The one who eats this bread will never be hungry. The one who eats this bread will never, never die. And so Jesus asked them not to be satisfied with the things they can see and touch, but look to the God that continually feeds them, cares for them, and loves them. On this Holy Saturday, we remember the gifts that Jesus will be giving to the apostles on Easter Sunday. Peace I give to you. The sins that you forgive, they will be forgiven. But the gift that they need once more and need it really badly at this Holy Saturday is the gift of hope. As Jesus takes the bread, he blesses it, he breaks it, and he gives it at the Last Supper. His thoughts must have gone back to his own ancestors, to the time in the desert when God fed them on manna, more than the bread that they will have. God, Jesus must have thought, this was the multiplication of loaves that I would do on the Mount of the Beatitudes. It was so similar to God feeding them in the desert. His thoughts must have gone and come to us in the future. And he would tell us, you hunger for bread of life, then I will give it to you. 
and you can shout an Alleluia. You know, my dear friends, a life fully lived is a constant multiplication of loaves. There is always some left over, just in case. And that is the way our lives should be. picture I'd like to paint is an experience that I had a few years ago. I gathered the children at the end of the year and the second graders and I said let us give thanks to all the beautiful things God has given us during the year and of course they came up with the various things. Christmas was just over so they thanked God for the gifts of Christmas. I thank God for the PlayStation. I thank God for a baby brother or sister that was born. I thank God that mommy and daddy have stopped fighting. And then little Donna Mendoza said, I thank God because this year Jesus came to me in Holy Communion. I was rather pleasantly shocked because theologically she was so accurate. She did not thank God for all the gifts she had received at Holy Communion. She thanked God for the fact, not that she had received Jesus, but Jesus had come to her. This is the story of the Last Supper. Jesus always takes the initiative. Jesus took the bread, he blessed the bread, he broke it, and he gave it. In the beautiful encyclical Sacramentum Caritatis, Pope Benedict tells us and challenges us to look at the Eucharist not as a thing, not as a holy thing, but as a personal encounter with Jesus. Jesus who invites us into the very dynamic, into the very action, into the very power of the life of Jesus himself. Jesus showed us that true happiness in life is in giving. It is often said that people give in order to receive, and it is very true. We see this in society. Every week I'm getting letters from CIBC and Bank of Montreal and TD and the other banks, would you like a credit card? It's not because they're interested in me. It's because they know that by giving, they will receive in return. Think of all the times, uh, like Christmas or Valentine's Day, when we really love somebody, what is the best thing we do? We spend such a lot of time and energy and thought in order to give the perfect gift to the one you love. It is also true in the very highly competitive society in which we live in. The world tells us in order to be successful, to be good, you have to have this car and that house and you have to have this deck and you have to have such a bank account. All these things make you very special. But give me a break. None of these will truly satisfy one's heart. These are not truly gifts. These are just things that will help you to live comfortably, but they don't truly really give you happiness. One of the most special gifts that we can give is the gift of eating with friends. Think about it. If these people are so special with you, they bring out the best of cutlery, the best of crockery. They bring out everything that they do not know and do on an everyday basis. One of my friends said, Father, you should come off and my, ma my wife brings out all the best stuff that we have over here. And so the breaking of bread is such an apt phrase at this table when we eat together.